my name is Danny Henry. I work for Eastman Chemical. I have been with Eastman for just over 17 years. Uh, I spent 13 of those years in the field as an operator. And I did work at our research and development pilot plant. I worked on units as small as something that fit on the side of a wall, which we actually did, um, all the way up to full-scale production. Um, so I got to see a wide variety of equipment that we use there. Um, I moved from there into one of our solids production and, and shipping uh, or packaging plants. So this was something completely different. I got to see us take this product, turn it into this product, put it into this packaging, put it on a container and out the gate. So that was uh, something different too. So in my 13 years as an operator, I've seen quite a wide variety of different operating um, procedures. So I came into the reliability group um, right at four years ago, and I was instantly introduced to this software called uh, Meridium. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. So Eastman um, just hit the 100-year mark. I think we're 101 now. It happened kind of during COVID, so I, I'm not real sure where exactly we are on that. Um, but we employ 14,500 people across the globe. Now, our largest two sites are in Kingsport, Tennessee, and our other in Longview, Texas. Um, products we produce range from paint and coating additives all the way to molecular recycling. So we have just this wide range of products that we're putting out there. Um, you may or may not have recognized from my accent, but uh, I am from Texas. I'm working out of our Texas facility. Our Texas site employs right at 1,500 people with 700 of those being operators. So those are the people that I'm dealing with on a daily basis. Um, I thought I would show you a map of Texas. Um, <laughs> Y'all have never seen this map before? Uh, so this is the map I grew up with. This is the only one I know. So Longview exists in kind of that northeast quadrant of Texas. Uh, that's where our, our Texas site is. Um, but you can see here how big Texas is, right? So everything's big in Texas. Everything is big in Texas, y'all. So I thought I'd give you a few examples. Um, this is somebody's pet armadillo. These are a lot of fun. Now, I haven't seen one since I was a kid, but legend has it. They're, they're still out there. Um, okay, so this is Big Tex. Uh, surely y'all have all heard of Big Tex. He greets us as we come into our state fair in Dallas. Um, he talks to you, and, and uh, so you can kind of see in the background, um, and you can tell just how big Big Tex is. Okay, so this is my neighbor's truck. He, he just got this truck, um, and I was talking to him, and he told me he really wanted a fourth row of seats, but it didn't quite fit in the garage. So he had to go with uh, just three rows. Me, I would have extended the garage. But, okay, so now we have some friends from Dow uh, that live in Houston. Cam lives down near Houston. Y'all recognize this, right? This is a Texas mosquito. You can tell by the chompers on this guy, they are a force to be reckoned with. So you really want to avoid these at all costs. Um, so y'all may not really buy into my Texas tall tales, but I do want you to know that reliability and equipment monitoring are very big in Texas and really across the board at Eastman. Um, Eastman began our Meridium journey 25 years ago. Y'all, this really, really surprised me when I was researching for this because I had no idea. We began our first talks with, of course, then Meridium in 1997, and we signed our first contract with them uh, in 1999. Um, and in fact, I think Paul can attest to this, but Eastman had a hand in building the very first rounds module with Meridium. So there's a long-standing history between Eastman and what we now call uh, GEAPM. Uh, when I moved into the reliability group, we were transitioning from Meridium 3.6 into 4.3, uh, where we are now. We look to be in 4.6, hopefully by the end of January, and we've already got V5 on our, on our radar. Uh, plan is to be there by the end of uh, 23, so uh, maybe pushing our IT a little bit, but I think we can get there. What I did want to talk to you all today about is really our rounds and mobility successes, and we'll just call them opportunities to learn, right? We don't fail at anything. We just find ways that don't work. 
So we found quite a few of those along this way. Some of our biggest challenges were not just what device are we gonna use, but how are we gonna manage those devices? We're gonna share them, how are we gonna manage that? How are we gonna get the operators to buy into that? How are we gonna get them to use something new? Um, Y'all know operators, right? So uh, I, I will go kind of regress a little bit. So APM rounds has really become a vital piece of our equipment monitoring program. Um, we've developed routes that are equipment monitoring specific, so they really look at rotating equipment. And we ask our operators to kind of put on a different hat. We want them to look at our rotating equipment more from a mechanical standpoint. Um, we want them to find those issues before they become a real problem. Um, with mobility, we can write recommendations in the field. We can take pictures and add those to the recommendation in the field. Then when we come in, we can upload those to the server and they instantly show up on the proper backlogs and we can take care of those. So now there's no more sticky notes that get swept off the table and into the trash can or an e email that gets lost in a seemingly bottomless inbox, right? So it's all right there, it's all in one place that we can all see and track. Um, we have built queries and dashboards that help our operators uh, find their recs, not just their department recs, but their own recs, so they can see what's going on with those. Our work execution coordinators, we use the completion comments field more as a status field. Is that scheduled for a shutdown? Is it scheduled for next week? Um, do, we, do we have parts ordered? So what that does is really kind of gives our operators or really any recommendation author kind of that sense of fulfillment that they know that their recommendations moving forward, it's not just sitting somewhere uh, uh, dormant. With rounds and recommendations, we've, we've really gone from uh, mostly reactive. So it breaks, we fix it. So now we're a little more proactive. So we're able to find these things before they happen and we can plan ahead. Um, and with asset health really on our horizon, we plan to take proactive to a whole new level. But that's a different topic for a different time. Um, while I was limited in actually giving um, actual cost savings numbers, I, I am allowed to give you all a few examples. And these are a couple that I got to see personally of how rounds and recommendations really saved our company a lot of time and money and effort for that matter. Um, on occasion, I will walk the equipment monitoring routes with the operators. I'm not there to bug them or to look over their shoulder. Um, I'm actually there to learn. So I ask the operators a lot of questions. It's one way that I learn how to improve things and take it to the next, uh, to, to the rest of the site. So on this occasion, uh, the operator and I were walking and we came up on a pump and you know, we're, we're looking at it from a mechanical standpoint and the little trico oiler, the little oil bowl, if, if you're familiar with them on the side of the reservoir, it was full of oil. So I would say as an operator, I always thought the reservoir had oil in it. But one of the things that we've taught our operators is from time to time, let's pull those oil caps. Let's look inside that reservoir. What's going on in there? What does, what's the real oil level? In this case, that reservoir was empty. It had no oil. This pump is running with no oil in it. So obviously the operator went and found the proper oil, added it to the proper level, but he wrote a recommendation on that oiler. What's going on with this oiler? Um, the feedback we got from maintenance was, sure enough, the little set screw inside the oiler was broken and it was never going to put oil in the reservoir. So the operator was able to find that because of rounds and he was able to uh, uh, write a recommendation on that to have it fixed. So we really saved that pump from an uh, eventual shutdown. Um, on another occasion, I was uh, walking with another operator in another area and she noticed little orange plastic crumbles all around the base of the pump. Well, this is indicative that the little orange peel couplings that we use all over our plants, uh, I'm sure you do too, uh, it's beginning, it's nearing end of life. It's about to break. So she was able to take the time right then, set up the spare pump and put it online. And she took the suspect pump offline and wrote a recommendation on that coupling. What's going on? Have maintenance come look at that. As it turns out, of course, that coupling was about ready to shear off and break and shut them down. Now, this was a critical pump. Um, had this pump shut down, they would have shut their whole plant down. So you can really see how uh, 
rounds of recommendations helped. And in fact, in, in both of these uh, uh, examples, you can really see how rounds and recommendations um, allowed our operators to write a recommendation, find that, and get it fixed before we had a shutdown and caused a lot of other issues. And it obviously saved us money and time and, and lost production. So I mentioned earlier that we are in 4.3. Um, moving to 4.3 really opened up a whole new world for us in mobility. What device are we going to utilize that allows our operators to move about the plant without worry of device classification or permitting, um, but yet it presents the software, not just APM, but other softwares in a manner that they can see it easily uh, and, and it makes the software easy to use. Um, so we did find a class one div one, so the highest electrical classification device. Uh, it was an eight inch tablet. And we said, okay, this looks to fit the bill. So uh, now the testing began and I should have had pictures of this, but uh, y'all, I walked around the parking lot. Everybody probably thought I was crazy. Take readings, take readings, right? I'm testing these, this device. I'm testing it online, offline, in offline mode. I even stood in the rain in a raincoat and took readings to see how the screen would react to water on it. You know, these are things that the operators are going to have to deal with. We had to find them out. So we finally decided, okay, this device seems like it's the one for us. So now we got to pilot it. Uh, we picked a, a small department and, and we got their devices and we, you know, we began to see successes. But let me tell you, the successes did not come overnight. Um, not all operators are as tech savvy as the next. It took a lot of time with me in the control rooms, talking to the operators, helping them with the device, helping them with the equipment monitoring program um, before they began to uh, really get it and we really started seeing that success. So we wound up taking that success and we rolled it to another department. And then we built on that success into another department. Well, now we've got all these different users using this device. And we began to see that, okay, this one device um, doesn't fit all users and certainly doesn't fit all use cases. So the operators were wanting a smaller device. As it turns out, um, our manufacturer was making a small form factor phone size device. Um, so the testing began again. And when I got to the show and tell phase, if you will, the operators were really drawn to this thing like magnets. They liked the small device. They wanted something they could put in their pocket and be hands-free when they needed to manipulate valves or set up a pump. So uh, uh, it wasn't long before a lot of departments really started moving this direction. Um, we even have some areas, they don't have any Div 1 classification in their area. They don't need a Class 1 Div 1 device. They don't need that robust device uh, uh, with, that costs a little more. So what Eastman did was we partnered with uh, uh, somebody that did a certification with an Apple device and a case. So they certified that class one div two. So our areas that didn't have that div one to contend with, they were able to use a, a, a smaller device um, and they really liked it and we're having success with those too. I think Eastman may have been a little late to the mobility party, but in a really short amount of time, we've seen how mobile devices have really been a game changer for us. Uh, not just with uh, rounds and recommendations, but really um, in so many other ways. With the move into mobile devices, we began to find a new challenge, change. Y'all, I don't, I don't think I'm an old dog. Maybe I am. Um, but I was in operations long enough that I was pretty stubborn. I didn't really like change. No change is a good change to an operator. Um, so I just wanted to be left alone. Let me do what I'm going to do. Uh, and I'm going to do it the way they taught me 10 years ago. If I felt that way after 12 or 13 years as an operator, think how your 25 year and your 30 year operators feel. Y'all change is hard, especially when it's a technological change. Uh, the only way I really found to get the buy-in from some of these operators was just to be there. Like I said before, I was always just a phone call away. I was quick to get to their control rooms if they had questions. Um, I would pop in and let them ask me questions, let them complain to me. Um, those complaints are how we find solutions. So it was important to me to be there and let them talk to me and, and, and I was able to help them out. Um, but 
I found the more time that I spent, not just helping them with the devices and, and the program, uh, but just talking to them, I found that they were beginning to buy in. Uh, they were beginning to see the benefits of rounds and recommendations. Things were getting fixed. We weren't just talking about it anymore. We were documenting it. Now they were starting to see that things were getting done. Um, they, uh, they found that we could add a picture to a recommendation. Y'all, this is a lot of benefit to this. Um, operators on nights, he's going to write a description, but he can now take a picture of that, add that to that recommendation, and now our maintenance hands, when they see that, it really helps explain that to them. Um, they were finding ways to improve their routes, and I would try to implement those as quickly as I could in good faith to them. But I was starting to see that the more time I spent with them, I was learning just as much from them as they were ever learning from me. Our operators weren't just buying into the program, they were beginning to improve it. So as a site, we're almost done with our uh, rollout of mobile devices across the plant. I've got a couple more departments. Crossing my fingers, I'm done by Thanksgiving. Um, but we're really improving our reliability program all along the way. There's really so many avenues that mobile devices have opened up for us, not just with rounds of recommendations, but our corrosion group, um, inside inspection management, relief valve management. Really, there's so many more things that we can do now. And, and I'm already looking to the future. Uh, I see us putting types of check sheets into APM. Is it ladder inspections, uh, fire extinguishers? The rounds module, and especially what I'm seeing from rounds pro, really lends perfectly for these tasks. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, just the fact that we can, like I said, add pictures to recommendations that really help our maintenance hands understand what the operators are talking about. But I can add a picture to a reading, and that really helps our operators. We know that they understand what we're asking them to look at. So that's, that's a big deal, and that's something we're moving towards very quickly. Um, I'm really happy with where APM and mobility have taken our reliability program so far, and I'm really excited about where it's going to take us in the future. Um, Y'all, if I'll just say it, if this old dog can learn new tricks, first let me give you an example, and y'all cannot tell my boss this, so if you know my boss, keep this quiet, Jared Shannon, Elise, Hannah, uh, don't tell Jennifer. Um, four years ago, when I moved into this role, I could barely use my Outlook email, much less my calendar, y'all. And now I'm building routes and managing routes in APM. I'm building queries and dashboards in APM to help our operators. Uh, uh, I'm developing training documents, conducting trainings to engineers, to operators. Um, y'all, I'm imaging mobile devices. These are things I never dreamed that I would be doing five years, four years ago. Uh, so. If I can learn how to do these things, I feel pretty confident that I can take that to our operators. And I can teach them mobility and equipment monitoring, and I really feel like you all can too. And I do know that GE Digital and APM are going to be right there with us along the way. So I think with that, uh, I'm going to open it up for questions. Whew, I see a lot of hands. <laughs> oh, boy. Danny, that was... Uh... That was an excellent presentation, thank you. I know at CB Chem we've had a lot of interest in rounds and mobile, uh, mobile inspection, the whole nine. So one of the challenges we're running into is we have routes, we have great checkpoints, but the ad hoc, hey, I'm walking down a route, but I see something, how do I take care of that? So have you found a solution to that? And then, Absolutely. Okay, second part was, um, what about optimizing the routes? You kind of talked about operators are seeing ways to improve that. That sounds like a manual improvement. Is there ways to automate that? Okay, so first question. Um, we're on a route and we see something we need to have fixed. It's not on my route, what do I do? So the very first thing I did um, before we actually rolled out was I taught all of our operating areas how to write a recommendation on the computer, okay? If I can't write it on the device, I gotta get it in the system. So it's really, really easy to write them on the computer as well. Um, of course, develop the training documents and I went to every control room and trained their operators every shift and showed them how to do that. So uh, um, that's how we handled that. As far as um, automating changes, 
most of those I do manually. Um, it, they, it, we don't have a lot of them, to be honest with you, but when we do, they'll just call me or send me an email, say, hey, I need you to swap this reading with that reading, or we don't take this reading anymore, and I remove it. Um, I guess if you had some kind of very large change, um, we have done some things with our IT with data loaders, and so we can just fill it out in an in a Excel spreadsheet and let IT load that in. So I, I guess that would might be automated is, if that's exactly what you're, what you're asking. It is, and it's kind of also a petition to, to Steve's team, because um, that's something that we've seen other um, offerings in the market that have said, hey, we can help automate this in a way that's really intelligent, right? So we talked about AI ML. How does that apply to rounds? Whew, I think that one might be, yeah, that one might be a little um, over my head. So I would have to get with our IT, and, and I think that's going to be my standard answer, right? I'll get with IT, and I'll get back with you on that one. Um, anybody else? Dan. Hey, Danny. A um, couple of questions and a comment. Uh, the session is being recorded, so just be aware that oh. don't get the link to your boss. Okay, okay. <laughs> don't so, give her the link. Sure. So you know, on a serious note, a couple of things. Uh, one question is, are you using shared devices or each of the operators has a personal tablet? Okay, and so right now we are shared. Okay. Um, and that does um, prevent, uh, present challenges. Um, and that's really in our IT hands. Now I'm kind of the go-between, obviously, um, but we do have two, so we have Androids and we have iOS. And they're, they're two completely shared programs that we use. Um, and it's just a kiosk mode and we can control the apps. Um, but yes, that's, that's how we handle that. Uh, one for one, it, it's a, it may be a pipe dream, I don't know, but it's something that we do have on our roadmap that we hope that we can get to. Okay, and on the operational side, are all the critical tasks related to operations managed by the operator rounds, or just a few set, and I'll give you real examples. Are you doing your safing, your like nitrogen purge, op support, as operator rounds, or do you just focus on leak detection, gauging, taking measurements, or what else is like part of that operator round that you're just managing through the tool? So right now, pretty much we're just in equipment monitoring, but really the sky's the limit. Um, and, and that's kind of what I was talking about with, you know, eye bats and safety showers and, and, and uh, ladder inspections. Those are the things, once we're finished with our complete rollout, we've already got them on a list. Hey, how do we address this? Um, so we're not there yet, but we are trying to move that direction um, once we get the rollout complete. And, and I, I see no reason why we can't do that and put it in rounds. So in the future, you, if you're going to switch a pump, recirculate the plant, you're going to manage the operator rounds as well? I believe so. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot. Uh -huh. Hi. Yes. Next question. Uh, well, I have two questions okay. and one comment, of course. Uh, great presentation. It was the most relatable, I think, so far in the conference for me. Um, do you have constant Wi-Fi in your plant? And are your operators like handling like uh, disconnectivity and how that works? Those are great questions. We do not have continuous Wi-Fi in the plant. Um, and that does serve as a, a problem. We are working towards that. We're, we've got a project going right now just to solve that exact issue. With our Android devices, um, we don't even have cellular. So connectivity is a thing. What we do and what we're teaching our operators, and, and it seems to have solved a lot of our problems, and it was on APM's uh, uh, suggestion, but we have our operators mark the routes for offline, and then we turn APM off. And so it's not trying to ping the server. It's not trying to send readings all the time. It speeds the route up. But most importantly, um, it holds all those readings for them. So take, for instance, I'm outside. I'm taking readings. And, and they call me, and I need to go set this pump up. I put it in my pocket, and I go set this pump up. It's been 35 minutes. APM's logged me out. My readings are gone, unless I'm running them in offline mode. Now it doesn't matter what happens. I get signed out, the battery can go dead, it doesn't matter. Well, as soon as I sign back into that device, my readings are waiting for me. So that's how we've solved that problem. I will say our iOS devices, we do have AT&T cellular. Um, that's pretty big. Uh, it works great. Um, I wish we could have everybody with cellular. Um, the capabilities that they're having and they're showing me is so neat. 
um, they're literally taking uh, uh, videos and sending it through Teams or live chat into their work execution coordinator to say, hey, listen to this pump. You know, these are the kind of things they can do with that connectivity. I hope that we get there and we have that full-time connectivity in the future. Um, it is something that we're working towards. So I can say that we are planning to do Wi-Fi in the plant to have full connectivity. And in, even in testing in full connectivity mode, but like you said, if something happens and you get called off and you're pulled away, we've had experiences with difference, differences of recommendations not coming in properly and such. So it has been our, recom they recommended that we put it in offline mode altogether. Mm -hmm. So I bring that up because we're going to spend an, ins an insane amount of money to put a Wi-Fi out on the plant, and is it a benefit? And this was really my question was. My second question is, um, and it might seem a little negative, but our operators won't do anything additional unless it brings a benefit to them. So right now they're doing rounds and they're doing them on paper. Uh, so what did you tell your operators <laughs> that brings them benefit to carry around now a tablet in addition to their tools to do this route um, where it only benefits essentially Big Brother because it's gonna benefit us as right. reliability engineers, it's really not benefiting my technician. Another, Unless there's something I don't know about. Right, another great question, and it comes up all the time. Every, every new control room I go into, that's the first question I get asked. Well, why are we doing this? Well, before when we're doing it on paper, like somebody said earlier, where's that go? We put it in a filing cabinet somewhere, nobody ever looks at it. Um, with APM, when we're taking rounds and we're writing recommendations, uh, we can track that. And that's what I try to tell the operators. Before we were sending those emails and we were writing those sticky notes or we were just talking about it. And there's no more talking about it anymore. We put it into APM and it's there. And everybody can see that. Um, it's easy to see in the dashboards. Um, our upper management's watching that. They don't like to see uh, a long outstanding recommendations. So the operators are seeing that, okay, I'm running this route, it's new. I haven't had to do this before. I don't like it, but I can see that things are getting fixed. I'm not just telling people and it's you know, getting lost somewhere. So it takes time and it has taken time and it's still taking time to, to get to that point that they understand that yes, writing these recommendations, doing these rounds, now we have a place to store it, now we have a place to track it and see it and things are getting done. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hey, hey, Danny. Huh? Hey, Danny. Hey, Danny. Great presentation. Oh. Yeah, back here. Oh, Great presentation. Uh, with the operators finding uh, these, making rounds and doing findings, do you have any idea of what percentage of your day-to-day -day maintenance work is coming from mm. operator findings? I don't have that number. However, uh, uh, we had a, a recent town hall, and our vice president, he's, he's over maintenance, he was talking about the large number of notifications our maintenance department is now getting. And, and I was just sitting there going, it's our bomb, it's our bomb, it's equipment monitoring, it's us, it's operators. Um, but I don't know that number, but I do know that there's a huge uptick in the number of uh, relevant recommendations that are now getting put into the system, and it's coming from our operators. So we're getting things uh, taken care of. Hey, Dan, yes. me again. So one question. Are, are you using operator rounds to track as well RFIDs and how, people in the, how many people are in the plan, or are you using uh, operator rounds for equipment with part coding just to read some gauges if you have that instrumentation available? Right. We, we don't use barcodes all over. Um, pretty much, I just, I build, the, the operators give me the route and I build it in a walking order for them. However, we have our utilities department, they're all over the plant. Uh, they got this water tower and that water tower and this water tower, right? They might not go in the same order every day. That's where our barcodes come in handy. So they can go scan that barcode and it pops them to that spot in the route and they can go from there. So that's how we're using barcodes at present. I'm not saying that we won't go to a more uh, prolific use of barcodes, but right now that's what we're doing. Perfect. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, hi, uh, yep. one question for me. Uh, are you using the schedule at rounds level or the measurement locations level? Okay. Or do you have a mix of both? So we schedule at the ML level. Um, we have, we usually build one route um, and then it'll have a, a 12 hour schedule, it'll have a one day schedule, it'll have a one week, it'll have a one month. Um, that's how we do it at present. Um, that's how we like it. Uh, and so that we can just build that one route and manage that one route and we can, you know, let it play out from there. So that's how we're handling schedules. Mm -hmm. Good. 
Uh, you did a great job with your presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. For somebody who said they were uncomfortable up there, you blew it out of the park. <laughs> um, Thank you. My questions are about mobility. You just sort of answered one of them, uh, that your operators can skip wherever they want to go on the route mm -hmm. without issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the second part uh, that I wanted to ask is, uh, okay, so they write a recommendation, now your maintenance folks are gonna go out into the field and fix whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, are they doing that electronically with a mobile device, or are they coming out of there with a piece of paper? So, right now, it's paper. Um, I, but I do have our maintenance department asking me quite often now. Um, in fact, we have some devices in maintenance hands. Um, so right now, they're doing it on paper, but I think in the future, they, they'll be on mobile too. Now, our lubrication crew, um, they're using the mobile device. So they're going out and doing those PM tasks with uh, the mobile. They're using, um, in fact, they're using iPads. Uh, uh, so that's how they're handling it. But right now, mostly the maintenance guys are going out with paper. You're welcome. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> unless, unless this is a question about an armadillo or a mosquito, um, I don't know that I want to hear this one. So, so Danny and I do work together, so I'm going to try to throw an easy one up there for him. <laughs> um, how did we solve the visibility for um, one shift writing something up versus night shift coming in, seeing the same thing, and writing it up, and then you have duplicate um, entries? Okay, so that's a really good question, and there's two ways that we've solved this. Um, first off, I've written a query, put it on their operations dashboard, and so what I encourage them at their beginning of shift meeting that they pull that query up, and they can see all of their sections or their area's recommendations. Maybe they've been gone for long weekend. Maybe they've been gone for short weekend. They can come in and review that list and they can see all the recommendations in their area that have been written up while they've been gone. That helps prevent duplicates. Something that's really cool that APM does though on the device, um, when they first tap on the button to open a recommendation, the first page that opens is a list of open recommendations. So they can see any recommendations that are open on that piece of equipment that they're wanting to write a recommendation on. Um, they have to be real careful. I have to stress that the headline is what they're going to see in that list. So with the mobile devices, uh, it'll auto-populate the headline. So I absolutely have them de delete that out and put in uh, the equipment tag and then like a short description. Is it a seal leak? Is it a coupling guard? Um, and that's what they see on that page on the device. And so now when they see that, they, oh, they wrote that up last night. I don't have to write that up today. So they can just go and, and one of our actions taken is recommendation already exists. So that's how we're handling that. All right, going once, going twice. All right, thank you all very much.